My name is Eric Van Horn. I bought my first franchise in my 20s, and since then, I've owned six brands with 25 stores in eight states. I've also helped a thousand people find the right franchise for them. People like us who are not cut out for the nine to five and like to work smarter, not harder. How do we find the right franchise, buy it, grow it, sell it, and how do we do it in a way to own the business without it owning us? Those are the questions, and I'm on a mission to give you the answers. Welcome to Franchise Secrets. Welcome to the Franchise Secrets Podcast. Eric Van Horn here, and today I'm going to be talking about how to become a top performing franchisee. At least one thing to do, and at the end, I will have a four kind of key questions to talk to top performing franchisees. So if you're not sure where to get started, I'm going to help you understand why top performers are top, are top performers, and I'm going to give you some questions to ask top performers. Now, all of this stemmed from the mastermind. I had a conversation inside the mastermind. We were, were full of top performing franchisees in there, and we also have a lot of people that are on their way, that are on their journey to becoming top performing franchisees in their particular franchise. So I wanted to bring some of the mastermind into the podcast for you all today. Now, we started out by just asking, like who, like what makes, like what kind of adjectives would define a top performer? And here's just some of them. I'm not gonna give you the full list, but here's just some of them. They're consistent, they're generous, they're adaptable, they're team players, they're driven. They know how to delegate. They empower their learners themselves and they're curious. They're relentless. They have good follow through. They execute. They execute. And I think that is a key one too. They know how, they know their role is to execute the system, the processes that the franchisor has given them. So those were just some of the traits that we identified in top performing franchisees. Now, just a quick side note. As a franchisee, you shouldn't have to recreate everything. You don't need to recreate the wheel. That should be given to you. If you're a franchisor and you have not given your franchisees a top 10 list or a top list of whatever it is that they should be focused on in their business, then you may want to look at creating that. And it's really simple. Just look at your franchisees, look at the top performers. What do they do and what, can, what do they do that everybody else should be doing? And what do they focus on that everybody else should be focused on? So it's real clear once you start to identify the top performers and the underperformers. And for us as franchisees, it's clear to us. If we're not top performers, there's one thing that we can do to become a top performer, at least to give us a, an edge to become a top performer. And that's talking to top performing franchisees. At the end of this podcast, I'm going to give you four, I'm going to give you four questions to ask top performing franchisees, because sometimes we don't even know where to start, what to ask. And we start asking questions that we don't think are very good. And they might not actually be very good. Worst thing that you can do is get with a top performing franchisee, start asking them questions that you should be asking your franchise or, or they could get in the operations manual or they could get anywhere else. So you need to ask the best franchisees, the best questions, and the best questions are things that you're not going to get just from the operations manual, but things that you can get that they're actually doing, why they are achieving a different level of success than you are. Now, I've been at the point in my early on in my franchise career, I was uh, at a point where I thought I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing. And if I look at the franchisor and they're asking me to do X, Y, and Z, I was doing X, Y, and Z. I could check that off of the box. My mental box, I'm doing that. And yet I knew there were franchisees that were outperforming me. One of the things that we did back then is we would go visit businesses. This was, you would walk into a business and you would give them coupons and you would hopefully get customers out of that. And there was a way to do it. And I was doing it, but I wasn't doing it the right way. I was doing it, but I wasn't doing it as aggressively or to the volume that I should have been doing it. So I could have mentally checked that off and said, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. And yet when the time came to, when I started to reach out to top performing franchisees, meaning they're doing better than me. So just to, from a point of clarification, a top performing franchisee, they don't have to be the best. If you just need to get better and you don't need to become the best yet, 
talk to somebody that's doing something better than you are. If they're better at hiring, better at firing, better at marketing, better at executing, better at building a team, better at managing a team, whatever it is, if they're better than you, you should be talking to them. So back to the story. So I was uh, thought I was doing everything. I started to talk to people that were doing things better. And how do I know that they were doing things better than me? Their results were better. They had more revenue. They had the, if I was to look at the KPIs, the things that mattered in the business compared mine to theirs, they were doing better. So that's how I know they were doing better. Not because they talked better, not because they said things better, because they were at the numbers said that they were better. So that, I think that's really important because it's so easy to convince ourselves it's different in my market. It's different because of this. It's different in my territory. It's different because of my manager. It's, everything's different. And while that may be true, I know something that's even more true than that. There's a reason why, why they are getting different results. There is a reason why their results are different than yours. And it's not just because of territory, just because they have something unique in their market. There might be an element of that, but I know it's true. So I reached out to top performing franchisees. And what I discovered was I needed to double my efforts. I needed to double the amount of businesses that I was going to every day. And I needed to go into those businesses doing things differently. My friend, Ryan Casey and I, did a sales training earlier this year for franchisees. And we had, we did a challenge that was free for, or a small fee for people to join. And then we did some private consulting, private training for certain franchisees that wanted that. And we saw their numbers increase. Like we got testimonials back from them that said that were very specific. Their numbers went from X to Y after our training, because there were things that we told them to do that were different from what they were actually doing. And so a lot of times it's just the fine tuning of things. So if you're not getting the results that you want, and you start talking to franchisees that are getting results, here's the biggest mistake that I see people make. They go into those conversations and what they want to do. This is their mindset. This is a wrong mindset. So they go into these conversations with the wrong mindset. And that mindset is, I'm going to validate why I'm getting the results that I'm doing. And meaning they'll talk to the franchisee and they'll say, yeah, I'm doing all of that without actually trying to figure out what they are doing that's different. Now, you need to go into it. The right mindset is, I know that they're doing something that's different than we are doing it today in my franchise, in my business. And if you go into it with a mindset of discovery, how am I going to find out what they're doing? I'm, how am I going to find the secret? How am I going to find that gold nugget that they have that I don't have today? If you go into it with that mindset, I promise you, you will learn something. You will come away with a nugget that you can implement into your business and change things. And that's what happened to me 18 years ago when I started to visit and have phone conversations with the top, the best franchisees. And I realized I was going into it wrong. I was walking into a business wrong. I was saying the wrong things. And here's an example. When I would go into a business, I would just go to the front desk person and start asking them, can I leave these coupons? Can I leave you, can I leave some good chocolates for you? And then, so the goal was to leave coupons and hopefully they passed them out. Now, I thought I was doing that. I was, I was going into a business, I was leaving coupons and I was leaving chocolates or donuts or whatever the, the thing was. Now, here's the thing that I should have been doing that I learned from talking to people. You don't go in and just talk to the person that's at the front desk. You go in and you look at the first person that's smiling. The first person that's smiling, you talk to them, you look at them in the eye, and you engage with them because it's a friend, it's a friendly conversation versus the gatekeeper. So you smile, you make conversation with them, and all of a sudden they are taking the stuff and leaving the coupons and you don't say, can I leave them? You tell them where you're going to leave them and why you're leaving them there and why it's best for them and why you're doing them a favor with these coupons. 
So if I didn't have that shift in my mindset, I would have still been doing things the same way. And if I, and if my benchmark was going in, leaving chocolates and leaving coupons, then I would, I would never have learned any of this other stuff. So you need to have the right mindset when you're talking to franchisees. So here's another little thing. Make a list of five of the best, the top franchisees in your system. Who are they? You know who they are. They were on the stage on when, before COVID when you had your annual convention. They were the ones on stage. If you don't have it, just ask your franchisor. Who are the top revenue earners, the top first-year franchisee, the most improved franchisee? Whoever they are, awards in different areas, that's your list. Now, you have your list of five franchisees. Here's the litmus test. When was the last time you had a 30-minute conversation with them where you got to ask them questions on their business, the things that they're doing in their business? Now, whatever that answer is, that's you're, you're either feeling really good because you've had conversations with them in the last 30 days and you know all five of them and you know them really well. You know their spouse's name. You know how, how long they've been in the business. You know, if they own other businesses. You know them because they're your friends. Now, if you don't know who they are, you've never had a conversation with them or the last time that you did was you like something on their Facebook feed. That is not a friendship that you have yet. And that's a friendship that you need to nurture and, and get to know them. And now you know that this is the baseline. You don't know them and you need to get to know them. So how do you do that? And that's what we're going to talk about today, the last bit of this podcast. I have a full list of really, really good questions that we came up with in the mastermind. And, the, and how we came up with them is there questions that we would want to ask other top performers. We had a list. There's, there's like 60 of us in this mastermind. We had a list of, of questions that we would ask top performers. Now, inside the mastermind, we also have a lot of top performers and they have a lot of people that call them. So what questions get asked to you? So we were coming at it from both ways. What questions would I want to ask? And what questions are they getting asked that they think are really good questions? I'm going to give you four of them today. And the first one's really simple. What are your best practices? Like, What are you doing consistently in your business? And just ask them and then just shut up and we'll see what they're doing consistently in their business. And again, back to my earlier point, don't use this as a checkoff list. Like I'm doing everything that they're doing consistently. Their best practices are my best practices. If they give you one, two or three or 10 best practices, dive into them because they're gonna give you the high level best practice. So whatever that is, what do you mean by that? You have team meetings, well, great. Check. I have team meetings too. Well, what do you, how often do you have your team meetings? Who leads your team meetings? What do you discuss in your team meetings? Is there anything off limits in your team meetings? What kind of feedback do you get from your team meetings? Do you ever rate your team meetings with all of your staff that tell you how productive they thought it was? What's the attitude in the meetings? What's it like when they leave them? What kind of follow up is there to the meeting? So just because you have a team meeting and they have a team meeting and that if that's part of their best practice. And guys, I just pulled this, you know, out of nowhere, team meetings. So, but if that's one of their best practices, you can see how you can just ask a bunch of follow-up questions. And that's what I would encourage you to do. You know, if you don't know what kind of follow-up questions to ask them, just start with, tell me more. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. Tell me more. Can you explain more about that? What else do you do besides this? Like what goes into that? So just ask general probing questions or why. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? And you'll start to get those nuances that are different than what you may be doing. Now, you will lose if you don't ask probing questions. You will lose if you don't come away with them doing something differently than what you're doing. So just keep that in mind. You want to win. You want to come away with something and it's up to you to come away with something. It's not, it's not up to the top performing franchisee to give you the secrets, to give you everything. It's up to you to ask the right questions and to have the right follow-up. And the right follow-up is why, 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 tell me more, explain this. 
That's how you do it. Here's number two. What were your biggest takeaways going from one location to two locations, going from one truck to two trucks, going from no district operational manager to a district operational manager, going from X to Y, from A to B. So from one step where you are right now, where you have a roadblock in your business to be on that roadblock, ask them how they did that. When you first hired your marketing manager, what were your biggest keys doing that? So whatever the roadblock, the obstacle is that you're facing right now in your business, how did they get past that obstacle? What were your, the biggest keys to that? And a lot of times it's, how did you go from one location to two? How did you go from one truck to two trucks? How did you go from one crew to two crews? That's just growing and scaling your business. And there's always lessons to be learned in that. Here's an example. Here was my, my first example in retail. When you, know, you get a top performer in a, let's say they, they're in the retail, they're in fitness or they're in any type of retail business taxes, massage, you name it. They are a superstar their first year. They have a location that beat the record or they're close to beating the record for all locations ever in the history of that entire brand. What do you think is going to happen when they open up their second location? You would think that they would be the best. They would break that record or they'd break their previous record. And most of the time that does not happen. Here's what happens most of the time. If you were to ask them, what was your biggest lesson? What was your takeaway in that? They just didn't, they wouldn't tell you we did everything right. They would say, I didn't realize how difficult it would be going from one location to two locations. And here are the five things that I learned doing that, that I would do differently. They would say, I took away my manager. I had a really good manager and I took that manager and I had them help me with that second location. So the first one dropped and they couldn't do as much on the second location. So that one didn't do nearly as well. In other words, your focus is off. You're not at scale. Your focus is off. Most of the time, people have missteps when they're growing. So find that out beforehand. Ask them these questions before you're actually doing something, before you're growing, before you're scaling, whatever that next step is for you, ask them their biggest keys, their biggest takeaways uh, in that. All right. Number three, what do you as an owner, as a franchisee, focus on in your business? What are the key things that you focus on in your business? And here's a follow-up. What was it before? What do you want it to be? So there's three parts to that. What are you focusing on now? And that's really what you want to ask. What, what do you focus on? Because that's what you want to get to. And that's what you want to focus on. And then, and then ask them, what were you focusing on when you were at my level? Whatever that level is that you are at right now, what did you focus on? And how did you go from that to where you are now? And what do I need to look out for as I'm beginning to change my focus as a business owner from working in my business to working on my business, from doing the thing to creating the SOPs to teach other people to do the thing, from knowing the numbers, now having my managers report the numbers and the KPIs to me, from me doing all of the stuff to having them report to me and having them give me their thoughts and the team give me their thoughts versus me giving them my thoughts. So you just need to figure out whatever it is, wherever they are, wherever you are, get in their mind to understand their focus. What are they focused on in the business? And that's what you should be focused on. And ask them, is there anything that you would change or you wish you were changing with your focus on right now? Are you spending too much time doing something? Do you need to hire like, are your next step hiring somebody like an, an assistant, a virtual assistant? Now, this is where my friend Cameron Harrell comes in and he'll say, guys, if you are, if you don't have an executive assistant, then you are an executive assistant. And I think franchisees that are at any point where they are starting to grow and scale their businesses need an executive assistant. They need somebody that can do the things that are taking their mind off of focus and strategy and execution and let somebody else do that. And as you talk to different franchisees, I would imagine not a lot of them have that really good executive assistant, but that's exactly what they need. And if you are talking to a franchisee that does have an executive assistant, 
you know that they are at a level that you need to, should get to. So that was number three. What are you focusing on in your business, on your business? It's a really good question to ask. And you can go a lot of different directions with it. But again, don't use that as a validation point to, oh, I'm doing the same thing. I focus, they, they say, I just manage my business. And you could say, I manage my business. Dive into that. What do you mean by managing your business? Who do you manage? What does managing look like to you? How many hours are you managing your, your business? Okay, so number four, what do you see as the most valuable use of your time. In other words, what things are you doing to move the needle in your business? And this is a really good one. It sounds like kind of that last one, where do you focus? But this asking it this way, like what's the most valuable thing that you do in your business? And, and maybe just ask it like, what's the most one, two or three valuable things that you do in your business? Because now that takes them from the like big picture macro to like, oh my gosh, what are the things that I'm doing? One of them should be driving revenue. Driving revenue is something that we should all be focused on. And it's so easy to get focused on, you know, opening the location or looking at different vehicles to buy or all kinds of other things. But is it driving revenue? And as you're talking to top performing franchisees, I think that's one of the key things that they are probably focused on is driving revenue. Another one that I think, a top, if you know you're talking to a real top performing franchisee, they're going to say building a team. When I say top performing franchisee, they're all at different stages. I should have clarified that a little bit. A mature top performing franchisee is focused on, all of us should be focused on growing revenue, but building a team, developing a team is more of a mature franchisee that is focused on the right things. So that's what I would guess as I, if I'm talking to top performing franchisees, but they're all gonna be top performing. They're all gonna be different stages in their journey of being a top performing franchisee. You talk to a first year franchisee who had a record of whatever that record is, or the fastest to a million or the fastest to 2 million, they're still working on things. They're still growing. So you just want to know those things and, and then flip it back. Again, as you're talking to them, there's really two kind of trains of thought that you have going on in your mind. One is what are they doing now? But then you want advice on where you are. So then if that was a question, what's the most valuable use of your time in your business? And then ask them as a, as the, a kind of a follow-up to that, this is where I'm in my business. I've got one location. I've got one truck. I'm not ready for two crews or my second location yet. When you were at my stage, what did you focus on? What was the most valuable use of your time then? And would you change anything? What advice would you give to yourself? So as long as you're kind of going back and forth, it gets them out of their, out, out of their you know, a daily grind of what they're doing to help you. And so those are the four things. You know, What are your best practices? What are your biggest keys from going from X to Y, from A to B? from one unit to two units, from two trucks to three trucks. And then what are you focusing on mostly in your business? And then number four, where do you spend your time? What's the highest and best use of your time? You're going to be getting more from me on becoming a top performing franchisee because I think that is one of the things that we all strive for. Everyone, I've been there. I've been where I wasn't the top performing and I wanted to be because that means good things. It means revenue. It means profit. It means exiting at a really good multiple. It means making money it, most of the time if you are a true top performing franchisee and not just using vanity metrics. So top performing franchisee, people that are actually doing it really, really well and making really, really good money. That's a top performing franchisee in my mind. And I want all of you to become more of a top performing franchisee. I got a free Facebook group that is open to franchisees, franchisors, and anybody interested in franchising, go to franchisesecrets.com and you'll see a link there. It's free for anybody to join. And uh, if you have any questions in there, I'll be in there commenting. And so get in there, get active. We just opened that up to the public. It used to be just for franchisees. I've moved all of the franchisees that wanted to be 
into my mastermind. So this franchise secrets Facebook group is open for everybody now. And if you have any questions, you have any thoughts on top performing franchisees, get into that Facebook group, get active, and I'll get in there and I'll either record a video or I'll answer your questions. And even better than that, there's a lot of other people that are very active in the group and they will help you out as well. So thanks for listening. Please leave a five-star review if you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Franchise Secrets Podcast. Whether you're watching or listening, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to whatever channel you're listening on. If you want my help with anything from buying a franchise to franchising your business, please visit FranchiseSecrets.com.